Hello everyone, welcome to today's live and uh, you are watching this live and it's going to be on the topic of five things to look out for in a beginner's music theory book. My name is Dorothy Chia and I am the owner of Forte Music Training. I am a teacher, a piano teacher for the past uh, 30 years and I am also an author of four books. So today's topic, I am going to focus on music theory books and especially music theory books for young children. Okay, so um, stay with me because uh, in today's uh, topic, yeah, not only will I go through the five key points to look out for in a music theory book. I will also be sharing with you some special uh, package at the end of today's uh, presentation. So I've scheduled it to be about 45 minutes long, so I won't take up extra time, so it will end on time. So thank you for being here today. So uh, do share with me where you're from. Are you from Singapore? Are you a piano teacher or a parent? Type uh, PT if you are a piano teacher and type P if you are a parent. So it always helps to know who my audience are because um, if you are a piano teacher, I think your considerations will be a little bit different from the perspective of a parent who's out there looking for um, enrichment books for their kids. All right, so PT if you are a piano teacher and P if you are a parent. So there is a comment box somewhere around depending on which device you're looking at. Okay, so if you are a piano teacher, type PT, welcome for being here today. And if you are a parent, uh, type P so that I know who you are and who my audiences are today. Okay, back to the to today's session is on five things to look out for in a beginner's music theory book. Okay, so what do we have currently in the market? Okay, so currently in the market, I think, um, let me introduce to you some of those uh, books that I have used personally in my own teaching. So this is quite a popular book. It has been around for many years. This is the Lena Eun books. Okay, so she has two books. That is the Theory Made Easy for Children and my second theory book. Though that's the my first, my second, and my third. So I just happen to have my second with me. So this is the Lena Eun books. So this one is published in Malaysia. All right. And uh, very popular now also, there is this book. I'm sure you have used it. I've used this with my own nephews. So this is the uh, Poco books. Well, let me see where I can hold it. All right, Poco books. And I think currently there are four books. Okay, so the camera is here. Yeah, four books. Okay, so music theory for young children. Four books also published from Malaysia. It has been around for quite some time now. Like my nephew is now in university, so it has been around for that long. Yeah. So what else is out in the market? I think a few years back there was this book, pretty new. Okay. So also came two books, a little pianist, another publication, a Malaysian publication. All right. And then Last but not least, I am showing Theory Explorer. So Theory Explorer is my book. All right, Theory Explorer, let me hold it up. So this is book one. Okay, not very good at getting the angle. Okay, here. Theory Explorer book one, and then Theory Explorer book two. So there are two books, okay? And it's by Dorothy Chia. So I am the author of these two books. Um, Theory Explorer 1 has been around for, I think, since 2014, and this is in its second um, edition now. And 
shortly after I wrote Theory Explorer. Yeah, this has been around since 2014. Okay, and then the second edition came out in 2017. So now it's 2020. So it's a very popular edition now in uh, selling in Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, Hong Kong. All right, so let me know where you're from. Are you from Singapore? Are you from Malaysia? Or do we have friends from other countries around the region? Do let me know. Okay, so far everybody's keeping very quiet. I hope you will let me know uh, where you're from. Are you, are you a parent or are you a piano teacher? And maybe let me know what goals you want to get out of today's topic. So today's topic, I'm sharing five things to look out for in a beginner's music theory book. And um, I'm going to draw examples from my books. Okay, so even if you are using uh, other uh, music theory books, you can go ahead and cross-reference because the points that I bring out will be generic, but the examples I will show from my book using my book as a guideline. Okay? All right, so thank you for being here. If you don't know me yet, my name is Dorothy Chia. I'm a piano teacher. I've been teaching piano for the past uh, 30 years, and uh, I am also a music author, and I am a business owner. So Forte Music Training is my uh, business. I'm the owner of Forte Music Training. So thank you for being here today. All right, point number one. number one we're looking at concepts all right what are the concepts presented in the music theory book all right how are the concepts presented okay you are also looking at uh, from the piano teacher's perspective um, are these concepts presented in a logical manner in a pedagogically sound way um, are they easy to understand from the perspective of the student? Is it teacher oriented or is it student oriented? Okay, so looking at the concepts. So usually beginners, the two biggies that we are teaching would be notation. So music notation, getting the student to go from zero to learning how to read music. So they would need to know how to read music notation. Okay, it's pretty much like how you teach your kids the first letters of the alphabet, yeah, A to Z. And you present one letter at a time and then gradually build a vocabulary around the letters of the alphabet. And then you test them, their knowledge, and then eventually they learn spelling and all that, right? Okay, so when you apply that to music theory, you're looking at musical concepts that are presented in the beginner's book, music theory book, all right? So um, when you're looking at music theory books, you're looking at mostly two areas, the presentation of notation as well as the presentation of rhythmic, uh, rhythmic understanding. Okay, most books, most books in the market, ever since when I was learning music, all right, as a, a piano student, usually everything is kind of mishmash together. There isn't really a demarcation of, okay, now we're dealing with rhythmic understanding. So the concept of bar lines, metrical counting, note values, okay? So usually concepts are mishmash together. There isn't really a separation of the two. Okay, let us take a look at the table of contents in here. All right. So from the table of contents, you can see that it's very, very interesting. The traditional way of laying out table of content. Okay, let me just pull out um, something familiar. This will be the traditional table of content. All right, table of content, like that, listed form. All right, but like I said, I'm going to use my book as example today. So the presentation of concept in Theory Explorer is uh, very organized. And from the student's perspective, you can see that it's actually looking like a game of snakes and ladders. So it's very engaging. Students get to cross out 
and X when they have completed that particular topic. Okay, you will also notice that uh, I have organized it in keyboard activities, rhythmic activities, as well as um, note speller activities. So that means if you are looking about learning about keyboard geography, the student is not mishmash in their learning. So it's only one thing, one focus at a time. So presentation of concept is very important. Okay, so studies have shown that for beginners, um, young children from the age of four, five preschoolers, preschoolers age, yeah, if you can teach one thing at a time, that is the best. So here you have rhythmic activity. So again, when you're looking at rhythm, they are only looking at rhythmic activities. Okay, there isn't a cross. Uh, colonization of concepts like notation mixed with rhythm mixed with keyboard geography all right so and then this chapter is on learning to write music notes okay so in book one that is the presentation and I did the same for book two so presentation of concepts we are also looking at whether that particular concept after it is um, introduced how is it reinforced Okay, um, Theory Explorer, what I have done is actually create activities. So students learn by activities. We all know that if you work with young children, the best way to engage them is through play. Do let me know uh, in the comment box, do you work with young children? What is the age of your youngest children? If you are a parent, do share how old is your child right now? Okay, and of course, if you are neither of the above, just type that you are neither of the above and uh, so that I can better target the presentation to your needs. Okay, somewhere at the side, for me, I'm at my laptop. The comment section is on my left. So do fill in what are the... Um, okay, I'll type it as a question. All right, the age, what are the ages of students that you teach? Okay, and here I'm referring to young beginners. Okay, five to six years old. Hello, Tehui. Thank you for being here. Right, five to six years old. So those are preschoolers. They haven't been to primary one yet. Okay, so which means the way that concepts are presented need to be reinforced. So for young children, you will know that once the teacher or the book is out of sight, everything is now out of mind. All right, so very important. Whatever you teach has to be reinforced and constantly reinforced. Okay, now I have teachers who say that, oh, I'll just pick up a manuscript book and make the student write, yeah, pages and pages of, uh, let's say, middle C. So we'll just teach them treble clef, middle C. So we'll say, okay, now write uh, five lines of middle C, you know. Um, yes, that was like maybe teaching in the 60s and 70s, all right. But now the kids now are uh, exposed to technology. All right, they are more savvy, they are used to multitasking, they are um, have different needs. All right, so um, Theory Explorer is written with the new audience in mind. So the new way that I have adopted is teaching through activities. So what do I mean by that? So writing is an activity, okay? So pasting stickers, um, coloring, games, solving puzzles, and these are all activities that engage. So one of the things that I really strongly believe in is reinforcing of concepts as well as engaging the student to think, to think, to retain, and to remember. And that depends on how you train your students, all right? So if you train them right from an early age, to remember, to retain, 
and uh, to engage them in the thinking process, then um, the students are then trained. And because this is their training, then they are used to that kind of exposure. And rather than one week later or three days later, uh, you ask them what is the name of middle C and they'll tell you, I don't know, I forgot. Okay, so retention. So activity, presentation of concepts in Theory Explorer is through engaging the students differently through activities. Okay, so let me show you some example. So here they're pasting stickers. All right, this is an example of a page pasting stickers. Then let me show you a page where the student is coloring. All right, so here this is coloring. All right, here is uh, some games. So you'll find that concepts are repeated. So you want to reinforce, but you don't want to sound repetitive. Okay, so when you're not repetitive, you keep and retain their attention. So very, we all know that for young children, their attention span is very short. You need to retain their attention and keep that retention. Okay, point number two. So point number one, presentation of concepts. Is it up to date? All right, do we engage the students and engage them to think rather than just writing pages and pages mindlessly of copying notes on the manuscript book? All right, point number two, illustration. So the quality of illustration. I once met a teacher who um, said that, uh, who looked at music theory books and beginner's theory books, and she said, no, I don't like the cartoons. Okay, I don't like the cartoons. I want the student to do a lot of writing. I want them to really do a very hardcore uh, work when they are here at the piano lessons. So. Uh, it seems that pasting stickers are trivial or colouring is trivial. But again, as a piano pedagogue and having taught young children and having taught teachers and trained teachers to teach young children for the past 30 years, I would say that adopting the child-centric way of uh, learning is very important. Now, if you watch what engage children and on TV, for example, okay, or kids YouTube, all right, you'll find that animation, all right, uh, cartoons, uh, kids love stickers, okay, so these are what engage young children. So they're not talking about from the perspective of the adult. Yes, from the perspective of the adult, whether you're a piano teacher or you're a parent, you will feel that, no, I want hardcore learning. I want a very um, worksheet style. I don't want coloring because that's a waste of time or pasting stickers as a waste of time. But um, don't forget, this is what engage the child. So remember just now I talked about the activities, okay, the presentation of concept. I think it's very important that um, concepts are presented in a manner that engage the students multi-sensory learning, all right, through multi-sensory learning. And uh, what do I mean by that? So which means let's say I write, okay? So let's say I'm learning middle C. So first I learn to write middle C. It doesn't mean that the repetitive writing means that I have retained the memory of how to write middle C. Okay, so writing is one way, one exposure. So remember holding a pencil, this creates them to engage in fine motor skill. So something that piano learning is uh, working on, fine motor skill. Okay, um, then pasting stickers. So the act of peeling off the sticker and pasting them, okay? All right, this one is a sample copy, so I've taken out the stickers. Otherwise, uh, both Theory 1 and Theory Explorer 2 come with stickers. Now, the very act of taking out the stickers and pasting them onto the spot, okay? And aligning it within the lines. So these are fine motor skills, okay? So <clears throat> motor skills are involved, writing, what about coloring? Coloring teaches the student to also embrace fine motor skills, to stay within the lines. 
uh, most children enjoy coloring because there is also the concept of learning different colors <clears throat> so learning music and then pair it with uh, knowledge that they're learning at kindergarten the knowledge of learning colors and recognition of colors all right so all this is very important let me show you a bit about the artwork inside my book you will notice that I choose very strong, vibrant colours. Remember just now I said, if you look at what engage young children, okay, colours are very important. Okay, colours are very important. And the choice of vivid and colourful pictures um, help to engage the students. Now, think back to the books that your child or your student is currently using. Do they have colourful pictures? Type yes if you are using a book that has colourful pictures. Alright, and uh, I know the older books do not have so much colours. And let me share with you why. Alright, if the book is using mostly black and white colours, it is actually cheaper to print. Okay, cheaper to print than a book that is colourful. And so, to keep costs down, definitely, uh, if I choose less um, ink to use, then the price of the uh, book will be cheaper. All right, so this one has colors used, okay? But the difference in uh, Theory Explorer is that it uses vibrant colors, okay? And that's intentional. So students are attracted to vibrant colors, okay? One more thing that is within um, Theory Explorer is the choice of illustration. So Theory Explorer uses one artist from start to end. So one book is one artist. Okay. So let's say here, um, the person that drew this picture. Okay. And if you look inside the book consistently, even if you come across the same tiger, it is drawn by the same artist. So there's a consistency in the look of the book. Now, if you look at any of the other books that is not, that's in the market, all right, and I've done case study, so do check it out. You will notice that most books out in the market is not drawn by one artist. Okay, so next time you look at a beginner's book, take a look at the quality of the artwork. Okay, the other thing is the meaning behind the drawing all right the meaning behind the drawing so when you look at illustration it's not just looking at how pretty the the pictures are okay so definitely if the pictures are vividly colored it helps to retain and excite the student to want to do the work but we are also looking at secondary engagement again let's look at this one for example theory explorer one okay so uh, very often, I make the, the pictures, uh, okay, let me find one, something like this. Okay, all right, yeah. So you can see that um, you can engage the children to do the work by pointing out what the uh, picture is showing, all right? So here you have apple trees. Uh, wait, apple trees, all right, and um, they are having a picnic, okay? So this goes to show that uh, learning of music is uh, a family affair, all right? So very often, the child will be able to tell you by looking at the pictures, yeah, and engaging them, oh, what is the, the what are they doing? All right, yeah, okay, so we have an apple tree here. All right, let's look at these stickers where you get to paste the apples on the page. So you can actually narrate a story, draw the student in, and then relate it to the activity that they are learning. So um, multi-sensory, multi-prong approach. And let's take a look at Theory Explorer 2. How are the pictures used here? I'm going to draw on this one. Saving the Amazon rainforest. So we know that the rainforest, okay, is quite an advanced geography topic that you probably touched on when you're in SEC 2, okay? And here you'll find that uh, beginners as young as age 4 to 5, they're learning about the Amazon rainforest indirectly. 
What this page actually teach is the recognition of the notes F, G, A, B, C in the bass clef. Can you see the where I'm coming from now? Yeah, type yes if you're with me. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me on this. Okay, a multi-pronged approach where the student feel that they're learning, but um, they are learning in a multifaceted way. So the pictures are not just pictures that is aimless, but pictures that help you to discuss topics that expand beyond their knowledge of music. So multidisciplinary, as well as engaging the kid to think, to remember, to retain. So here, the Amazon forest, this activity is teaching them on the rainforest. So here they are doing a, a topic, a geography topic, but the activity teaches them base F, G, A, B, C. And because it's a story time, okay, why do I have the story time? Story time actually is a, a, like a test. Okay, so you're testing to see if the child remember. But only the teacher or the parent know that this is a test. Okay, so if the student pays the wrong sticker at the wrong place, it's a giveaway that uh, the concept of these notes have not been learned and need further reinforcement, either through flashcards or more activities. Okay, so it is a test, but it doesn't feel like a test. Okay, so look at the other books that you're currently using. Does the illustration work hand-in-hand -hand cohesively with the topics and concepts that you're teaching? Okay, remember today I'm talking very gener generally. I'm only using examples from my book because I have ownership over all the artwork and concepts. Okay, so it's easier to do it that way. So concepts, how they're presented, are illustration meaningful? Okay, are illustrations meaningful to the student and help to reinforce concepts? Now you can see that the, um, um, my book went one step further. So the illustration is not just for decoration, it is to reinforce, to draw the student into their learning, to ex get them excited. To, about topics that is not just music, but topics that is multidisciplinary. They learn about geography, they learn about uh, travel, they learn about exploring uh, diminishing uh, rainforest, deforestation. Okay, so multi pronged approach. So if you are a parent, yeah, I'm sure you want your music lessons for your kids to be. Um, multidisciplinary that engage the student to think way beyond music lesson itself. Okay, all right. Okay, third point, point number three. So moving along, point number three is fun. Some teachers, depending on um, how old you are, all right, think back of um, when you learned music theory. I remember when I did music theory and I was using the white ABRSM books, okay? Um, it was very old style. There wasn't a concept of pasting stickers or the concept of fun. It was just a lot of work, all right? Tell me how many of y'all think fun is important to get the student excited about their work. Type yes or type no. All right, so let me know, is fun important? So if you are a parent or a teacher, okay, do you think fun is important in your choice of a beginner's music theory book? Is fun important? Is fun important? Okay, all right share with you my experience so that gives you some time to type in your answer and Tehui says yes what about the other people that's watching this video so whether you are a parent or you are a, a piano teacher remember the beginners book and here we are focusing on beginners book so beginners we're talking about maybe like four years old preschoolers before primary one so primary one would be about six seven years old so if you are a child, okay, um, what engages that child? 
Okay. More and more, I think the concept of fun is important. All right. Uh, remember that you are looking at the world through the eyes of a, a young kid. Okay. This is their first exposure to music theory. If you lose them at the age of four years old, they will remember for life, huh? for life, that music theory is not fun. And when it's not fun, it's difficult. And when it's difficult, they give up. Okay, so whether you are a parent or a piano teacher, would you want your child to give up so early on in their life? No, right? So very important, fun is important. But we do not, again, want fun just for the sake of fun. We want fun that, uh, that is mixed with challenge. Okay, what do I mean by challenge? All right, fun that is meaningful, meaningful that as it engages the students to think. All right, okay, let me draw an example that is from Theory Explorer Book 2 at the end. And this is unique to Theory Explorer. No other music theory books in the market has this. Play the detective. In Play the Detective, the students are engaged in, uh, let's say here, crossword puzzle, okay, or pasting stickers, all right, pasting stickers, yeah, pasting stickers, and even um, early score reading, all right, score reading. So no other beginner book out there in the market has this. So this is what I mean by fun as well as engaging the student to think, all right? So some students will like this kind of fun, crossword puzzle, okay? So this is challenging, it's fun, it gets them to think and uh, motivate them to look for the answers if they have forgotten the answer, all right? Some students would like this kind of fun, okay? Simple score reading, okay, that... Uh, um, test them at multi-level learning, all right, note recognition, number of counts, circle the two notes that are tied together, okay, recognizing concepts learned, okay, so it engages, it challenges, and it's fun. So this kind of fun is good. So whether you are a parent or whether you're a piano teacher, this is what I mean by fun. Fun not in a frivolous way, but fun that is meaningful, that is helpful to the student in their learning. Okay? Um, fun. Okay, so that was point number three. Okay, moving along. Point number four. If you are a parent, okay? So if you are a piano teacher, you will know that parents look for the price of the books. Okay, pricing. So, um, Singapore is quite an expensive uh, city to live in, okay? And um, price of the books, whether you are a parent who is paying for the book or you are a piano teacher where you're buying the books to sell to the parents, yeah, you will also look at the price, okay? So, price, point number four, price. Just now remember, if you are here with me right from the beginning. Yeah, I showed you some books. Okay, so let's look at, uh, I'm going to randomly just pick up. Okay, this one, for example, this is very popular. Okay, they're all together four books. Depending on where you buy them, average the price per book is about $7. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Seven, they might have increased it recently. Okay. And, uh, but I remember when I bought this, it was around seven. Okay, let me take a look at the inside. Okay, without the, um, I don't know where I bought this from. Okay, I wrote here $9. Okay, $9. So that was the retail price of this book, $9. So I think the price might have been adjusted to $10 now. Okay, so there are four volumes, which means that if you're buying four books of this, yeah, you are actually paying... $40. So although it looks like one book is $9, but don't forget there are four volumes, four books. So in total, you are paying $40, Singapore dollars. Okay. 
All right, let me pick up uh, one of the older books. Okay, this was another book that I showed when I first started. This is from uh, Lina Eng, one of the older books. A lot of uh, white colour, all right? You don't have much colours inside. So you'll notice that, uh, remember what I said earlier on, if they don't have a lot of colours, it actually brings down the cost of printing. So this one I remember is in the vicinity of like $5 per book. So here, this one is my second. So there are my first, right here, my first, my second, my third, so three, three books. Plus, they also have the one for young children, so two for young children and three for the normal age students, so altogether five. So think about it, if you have five and the price point is about five dollars, so five times five, you're paying about twenty-five dollars, okay, for this range, twenty-five dollars, sing dollars. So this is printed in Malaysia, where uh, the, the ringgit exchange rate is a lot lower, okay, but you are paying five dollars, which seems reasonable, okay. But for five books, you are paying a total of twenty-five. Okay, let me go through my books now. Um, Theory Explorer one, okay, is uh, retailing at uh, eight dollars, eight dollars Singapore dollars, okay. And compared to this one, okay, it's more expensive. But remember, this is a lot of white color. This one has a lot of colors, okay? So it has to account for it, uh, the, the price. This one has stickers. Then this one does not have stickers, okay? It's only the kitty one that has stickers. This one has stickers, okay? So this one, not only it's black and white, it does not have stickers. So both Theory 1 and Theory Explorer 2 have stickers. They are colourful. They are printed in Singapore. Okay, so I already said this one is, oh, this one. Theory Explorer 1 is 8. The retail price of Theory Explorer 2 is 9. Now you do the maths. Okay, how much is it per set? One whole set. Book 1 and book 2. So 8 plus 9, $17, right? So $17 for two books, two books, okay, $17. Now remember Poco, four books, so you're paying $40, Singapore dollars. And uh, the Lina Eng one, five books, you're paying $5, but for five books altogether is $25. So uh, that taken into scope now, huh? now you look at point number four, pricing. If you can account for the price of what you pay. That means the value of the book, the content make the price actually um, okay. Yeah, That means you are getting value for the money. Yeah, For the money. So you cannot just take absolute amount. You need to look and balance it with the knowledge, with the content, with the price that has gone into producing this book, okay, is the value of what you're paying for worth it? Okay, so in the context of everything, then you would see that actually $17 is very cheap. Okay, it's value for money. Okay, and then moving along to my last point now, point number five. Okay, before I do point number five, let's recap what I have covered so far, just in case you have just joined in. Okay, so point number one, I'm going to leave the video on uh, even after this Facebook Live, okay, for people who have missed it. So if you think that there are piano teachers that would find this presentation helpful, do share this uh, post with them or if you think there are other piano teachers your friends that miss this timing because they are teaching okay then do share the link so I will leave this later on at my Facebook page so you can continue to share it all right do help me to share uh, and get the word out okay point number one concepts are concepts presented in a pedagogically sound way are they reinforced do they engage the student to think remember and retain point number two look at the illustrations are the 
illustrations um, for decorative purpose or are they meaningful to what you are teaching? Okay, so uh, remember, colors, colors um, help students to stay focused and engaged and get them excited, which brings me to the point number three, the concept of fun. For kids, fun is very important. It gets them a positive experience to their first music theory books. And when that positive experience stays with them for life, okay, then music theory becomes a lifelong learning activity. Point number four, very important for parents especially who's buying the book, are you giving them value for the price that you're paying for the book? So which means don't just look at the absolute amount of the price tag, look at the inside of the book, okay? So the content, okay? And um, is it value for the money that you're paying? Okay, don't just look at the price of one book, but rather look at the whole set of uh, price, the books that is in the, the package. And then lastly, point number five. Point number five is the end goal. Okay, if you are a piano teacher, your end goal with any beginner's book is to get the students to know the notes, that means from zero, they now know how to read beginner's music, okay? Too many students out there, I think, um, if they learn by rote, and there isn't a strong basis of music theory that reinforce concepts taught at the piano lesson, then uh, sometimes the, the student might play very well, but um, do not have a good theoretical foundation, okay? Don't forget... Um, the foundation of knowing how to read music is very important, especially if in future you might have a composer, right? You might have a student that is going to be the next composer. You might have a student that is going to be the next author of uh, music theory books. You're going to have students that might end up majoring in music. Okay, so the end goal of getting the students to know and have a strong foundation if music is very important in music theory, okay? So most parents, if you are in Singapore or Malaysia or any part in, in Asia, most parents will ask when can the child go to grade one? So a very important end goal is getting the student from zero to grade one. So we have said some books do it in five books, some do it in four, Theory Explorer does it in two, okay, to get the student to grade one. So, um, um, if you can combine this getting to grade one in a fun manner, in a child-oriented way, and get them in a pedagogically sound presentation of concepts that is uh, an, in line with getting them ready, to a smooth transition into grade one, okay? Um, and also in the cheapest and most economically way, all right, why not, all right? So that's my five big, uh, my five takeaway for what to look out for in beginner's music theory books. So, so that's it for today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, watching this uh, Facebook Live. I will have another live next week, so do stay tuned to what is the upcoming topic. So thank you for being with me. Thank you for, for your support. And do share and uh, get other people to watch this video if you think that it's going to be helpful to them, whether they are parents or piano teacher. So that's it for today. Thank you for being with me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.